Spiders still produce fibers that are better than, than anything that we can make synthetically in several respects. Some of the spider silk fibers are five times tougher than Kevlar, which is the best synthetic fiber that we can make. There are no toxics involved. You don't need um, oil to start with. You don't need a lot of energy. All they do is eat a few crickets and then they make this amazing material. These are a South American variety of brown recluse. They're called Loxosceles lieta, is their uh, scientific name. And you can see they're quite small. They're maybe the size of a quarter. Almost all spiders make this round silk, where, with one exception, and that's the spider that we're, we're studying. That's the brown recluse spider. And that uh, spider makes a flat ribbon. So rather than being round, this is only 50 nanometers thin, which means it's 1,000 times thinner than a human hair. Uh, and the width is uh, about a tenth of a human hair. So once she's out, I have to be quite quick. I used to, I, I like to use a gentle touch because I don't want to, I want, I don't want to hurt them. So. I'm going to use these cotton strips to restrain her. So we were the first to really do measurements on this material, right? So there are, there are um, in the entire uh, literature on spiders, there are exactly two publications, uh, and they're both more than 10 years ago that had shown that, that this silk is a flat ribbon. But we were really the uh, first ones to look at this as a material and really test the material and reveal some of its properties. So one of the things that we found is that this silk, despite having a completely different shape, is at least as uh, strong and stiff and tough as all the other uh, silk fibers that we know. Moreover, we found that this material behaves totally different when it comes to adhesion. So this material really has a certain stickiness that is not known from other fibers. And we think also that uh, this can potentially find application in completely new ways we think about adhesive materials. That is about maybe one, one, one thousandth the width of a human hair. In, in the very long term, we really think, yes, the, the goal would be to make synthetic materials like this, right? So can we synthesize uh, materials that are as strong and, and stiff and tough as the, the fibers from the spiders? Um, silk also has a lot of applications in the medical sector. So because silk is a biological material, it's biofriendly, right? So if you want to put implants into a body, in many cases people are coating these implants with silk. It's that you will, you will land the silk on the, on the surface without breaking it. So what we have here is an example of a silk-thin film that's only 50 nanometers thick. Uh, that is just as strong as other spider silks, much, much stronger than any other silk films that have been made so far. And that would vastly increase its, uh, its applicability and its, its different uses. And now you'll notice our scale has changed. It's up to about 80 nanometers. And you can actually see a cross section as we're scanning. This is what the silk looks like. It's this very thin ribbon and its height is only, looks like in this case, about 50 nanometers, 50 nanometers tall. That's only a few molecular layers of protein. This is a game changer in, in many ways because there's just no other way to produce a material with this shape, be it synthetic or, or biologically.